award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, you know, folks, I've been uh, trying to educate you as much as possible when it comes to uh, political candidates. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, as we have a number of these shows uh, before uh, the May elections and also November elections that you can begin to appreciate what each candidate has to offer. Uh, the candidate that we have on today is uh, Dr. Dave Moylan. Uh, Dr. Moylan is running for the U.S. Congress in the 17th Congressional District, U.S. Congressional District. Today's show, uh, the purpose is for the doctor to explain to you some of the interesting things about some issues that are that are happening in this country and I've said to you so many times folks vote for people who are educated get to know who your candidate is today we're going to get to know uh, what Dr. Moylan's all about and what he has to say and why he is running so without that as they say in show business without further ado here's I want to welcome you doctor to the Sam LaSan show Sam thank you it's, it's always an honor to be here as your guest you know, it's interesting, uh, Doctor, because we have um, today the politicians. Unfortunately, Congress has the lowest, you know, ratings that you can ever imagine. Uh, the president has the lowest ratings that he's had so far, at least as of this taping. Uh, and people are just, just, just fed up with politicians because people say a lot of things and do a lot of things um, that don't make any sense sometimes. And the general public just keeps on paying the price. One of the things I've stressed here for many, many years is please get to know the people qualifications. I, I know you have to run as Republican because you're on the primary, but after that, you're not a Republican, you're not a Democrat. You're Dave Moylan, runner for Congress. So with that being said, there are some, there's a lot of issues. But today, I think we want to cover some issues uh, that are very important. In fact, the, some I think the most important issues, um, pro-life, Obamacare, and then uh, jobs and, and, and where you stand and where the current congressman is, is standing. So, with, so as we start the show, let's talk about the, uh, the reason why you decided to run. Well, yes, Sam. As you know, I'm a medical doctor in Schuylkill County. I specialize in radiation oncology. I'm the medical director of the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute. Uh, for the last two years, I've also served as Schuylkill County uh, coroner. Every July, we have a celebration of life picnic on our football field at our campus in New Philadelphia. And as that date approached uh, last July, I became aware of the voting record of our current congressman, Matthew Cartwright. And he succeeded uh, Tim Holden, who had served the region for about 20 years. And I've reviewed uh, Tim Holden's voting record as it applies to the pro-life issue. And my recollection was that Tim was always a reliable pro-life vote. And when I looked at Matthew Cartwright's record as of then, there were two important pro-life votes, which we see on the screen. One was the repeal of Obamacare, or the Affordable Health Care Act, and that occurred in May, and Mr. Cartwright voted not to repeal that. Next, in June, was the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. And basically what that states is that at 20 weeks, the little uh, developing child can experience pain. Don't torture the thing. Don't uh, perform abortions after that milestone. He voted against that also. Well, the, So at, uh, July 21st, I declared my candidacy for the uh, post of the 17th Congressional District. Recently, people were saying, hey, Tim Holden, he wasn't that all um, pro-life. And I look back over his record over the last 16 years anyway, uh, eight terms in Congress. And initially, he had a certainly 100% pro-life voting record. And then in more recent years, it fell down to 40 to 50%. Again, I think related to his Obamacare uh, support. But for a lifetime in Congress, his pro-life voting record stands at 76 percent. So I'd like to compare that uh, in the next slide. Okay, there's uh, the, there were two other Cartwright uh, votes against life. One was the Blackburn Amendment, and the other was more recently in January this year, 
no taxpayer funding for abortion. And he voted against both of those. So uh, next slide will show what his overall record is according to the National Right to Life Committee. It's zero percent. But on the other token, Planned Parenthood Action Fund, they think he's pretty good and he has a hundred percent voting record. But I think he's out of step with uh, the values in Northeast Pennsylvania. And that's evidenced by the Heritage Action for America uh, rating system. And they're basically a conservative think tank. He's got a 20% rating there. So 80% of the time, he's on the liberal end of the, the voting. So basically, um, correct me if I'm what you're saying is that when, when I had Congressman Cartwright on the show, I asked him in my office if he was pro-life. He said he was pro-life. And what you're saying right now, the record is not showing that. Okay, so... Um, he's talking the talk, but he's not walking the walk. Okay. So when we talk about what do you stand for, and it's up there on the screen, what does Dave Moylan stand for? Well, again, I'm, I would characterize myself, and I use the same characterization when I was running for coroner. I'm proudly pro-life, Sam. And uh, I go, sometimes it's not a popular uh, issue, but my uh, feeling is that I would like to not only be a solid pro-life vote, but I would like to champion the cause, what, such as uh, Congressman Chris Smith, who has uh, spent his career um, in that endeavor from New Jersey's 4th District. Uh, I'm a constitutional conservative, and I realize that the Second Amendment guarantees all others. And certainly religious freedom, which is under attack, especially in the Affordable Care Act, some of their provisions uh, coercing people to pay for uh, medical uh, treatments that are objectionable to them from religious grounds. So I think that's got to be reversed also. And finally, as a medical physician, I'm seeing time and time again where this is having a negative effect on our patients, and uh, we'll talk about it later in the segment, but uh, Obamacare has to be repealed or a major reworking of it has to occur. The other thing is job creation, very important in the 17th district, and uh, energy uh, policies that, that are responsible, uh, that uh, use the natural resources that we have beneath our feet. You know, um, as people who are out there concerned and, and looking to vote for, uh, you know, the next congressman, it's such a difficult task because we're all nice people. Um, Cartwright's a nice person, comes from a nice family. You're a nice person, you come from a nice family. And then we have to decide, you know, why? You know, do we vote for a person because he's a, a Democrat and he comes from an area that's solid Democrat because that's what you'll hear and I think that's so wrong today, even if it was Republican. You know, if you're a Republican, so it's a solid Republican. And we're in, we're in the mess today, Doctor. The, the country is in such a mess because people are doing that. Now, when you talk about pro-life and you're talking, there's a lot of things that are involved with that. Um, you know, because if they're now taking, you know, ripping babies apart, and that's what they're doing, uh, and they hate, to, they hate to see that, but that's what they're doing. Um, what about senior citizens? who are going to be sometime where maybe they're not capable of doing the things they did and they, be, and they get sick. Now they're a waste as far as the, some of the, the government, some people in the government feel they're a waste. And so euthanasia comes into the picture. They're already euthanizing people in this country, but people aren't aware of that. And there are a lot of people that won't, you know, the liberals won't let you know that, okay? They hide that. See, and you're, you're out there every day saving lives. Uh, as, a, as a medical doctor and oncologist, and you're out there trying to s save the quality of life. You, you use the term celebration of life. When someone's sick, they try to do everything they can to save that life. It's a child or if it's anything. They do everything they can to save it. But on the other end, Michelle Obama thinks it's okay to have partial birth abortion. Okay, Wendy Davis stands up for 13 hours and says, we have to let these girls, women have abortions, and I'm even for late, according to this email I have here, late-term abortion. So, and these are the things that people, they say, well, it's not an issue. 
it is an issue, don't you think? It's very much an issue, uh, Sam. And I'm going to invite the viewers to check in with my website, docmoylan.com. And I have what I'm calling a pro-life credo on there. And it's an expansive uh, definition of pro-life, not just the abortion issue. That's only one part of the whole spectrum. But uh, I, can I refer to some of those sure. points? Yeah. One would be to support for the unborn humans uh, proper care and rights to be born and nurtured, but also for the children. They need to grow to maturity and remain safe from dangerous situations that can rob them of their future potential and happiness. You talked about the older uh, patients for the, uh, the ill, the mentally and uh, physically challenged, disabled, but we have to recognize that euthanasia is not medical care. Abortion is not medical care. But we have to support education to preserve life, health, liberty, and, and happiness. Protect all people from crime, terrorism, n natural uh, disasters, bullying. You know, this is all part of the pro-life uh, message. Now, we have other slides here which I find interesting, okay? It's horrific to think that there are children victims of abortion who never see the light of day and that's uh, from Pope Francis. But the other slide uh, that we see here. Now, folks, look at this. Now, this is a 19-week-old fetus, okay? And according to Wendy Davis and all of the people who think it's perfectly okay and women who are having abortions, now take a look at this fetus. And this is, this is the sad thing. Um, when they abort this fetus, what are they actually doing, doctor? Well, I'm going to refer to my uh, coroner's definition of homicide. Okay. It is death of a human being at the hand of another human being. So, I'm not saying that that's murder, but that is certainly homicide. All right, so what they're doing with this, okay, and, and, they're, and they're pushing this, they're pushing this. Um, those people who are voting for Obamacare are pushing to take this little fetus to pull his head or her head apart, pull their legs apart. I know it's graphic, and I know people are going to get upset. Nothing but, short of gruesome. But it's gruesome, okay? And, and, and you have a person like Wendy Davis who they're calling a saint for saying this is okay. I, I don't know where this country is going, Dave. Well, I really have no idea. It's, it's so sad, and they want to know why there's disasters, okay? Don't you think God is saying... Enough's enough. Yeah, perhaps, Sam. But uh, the reason I selected that uh, picture yeah. was uh, we got a call in the coroner's office. And if there's a stillborn or a premature birth, that's what this was, a 19-week uh, fetus was delivered to this young couple. Of course, their hearts were breaking. When we were called, the baby was still alive. It, it had taken some breaths. But unfortunately, at 19 weeks, it's not viable. And uh, pretty much it's a 0% survival rate. When they get out at 24 weeks, uh, uh, probably uh, f up to 50% are, are viable. But at that, you know, the, the, the little thing was doomed. And it reminded me of uh, going back to history, as I, I like to do, uh, back in the Civil War at Gettysburg, if a, a man, soldier, was wounded in the abdomen, they were dead. I mean, they could live for days, but you knew they were dead, because as opposed to a, a cannonball in the leg, you could amputate the leg, and a lot of them would live. But in, in a situation of a gut wound, they didn't have antibiotics back then, and uh, uh, the fate was, was going to be carried out. But, Taking, taking that stand that you have, okay, and folks, I'm talking to uh, Dr. David Moylan, and he is running for U.S. Congress and Republican primary uh, on the 17th U.S. Congressional District, and we're trying to get information out. Every candidate we have an opportunity. Uh, this is a paid program. I want you all to know that. Uh, however, I'm asking some questions that I think uh, a number of emails came in to me as to the pro-life thing. You know, I always hear, you know, it's, but that's only one thing, okay? What about jobs? What about energy? And I totally agree. I mean, I think they relate to one another. And you can learn about this on his um, uh, docmoylan.com. 
uh, where he addresses it. So it's not only one thing, okay? Uh, even though I think, in my personal opinion, and I'll tell this to anybody, including the, the President of the United States, I am pro-life, and I think the most important thing in life is uh, the unborn baby who God created. Now, I'm pro-choice, and I'll tell you where I'm pro-choice. Before you have sex, that's the choice you got to make, choice. okay? That's the choice. After that, God takes over and there's a creation made. And some people, they want to play God. And, and some women think it's health care for them. They think when you're telling them that they cannot have abortions, that it's health care for them. Could you straighten that out for me? Yes, indeed. Uh, we've seen <clears throat> the gruesome uh, end of uh, abortion as it's been played out in North Philadelphia where Kermit Gosnell was um, performing late-term abortions. And there's a handful of other uh, physicians, I hate to call them physicians, but who have uh, carried out these procedures elsewhere in the country. And uh, one such uh, man was driven from Pennsylvania through the, the surveillance of our uh, health department. So. Well, folks, I'm talking to Dr. Dave Moylan. Once again, uh, he's running for Congress in the U.S. Congressional 17th District. We'll be back right after this message. Welcome back to the Sam Sancho, folks. Uh, my guest today is Dr. David Moylan. He is a candidate for the Republican on the Republican uh, ticket for the primary, running uh, for U.S. Congress in the 17th Congressional District. And uh, to continue on, we talked about you know your stance on pro-life. Now we come into something that everyone's concerned about: is how what are the effects of Obamacare? I already I told you at lunch that uh, the Drudge Report indicated that I think the fourth hospital in, in I think it was Georgia, one of the states, closed because of Obamacare. And a lot of people right now are starting to feel the effects of you know their insurances, their doctors, etc. So your your um, philosophy on on uh, the Obamacare, and I know you have some slides to uh, show well. us. The United States enjoys the best health care in, in the world. And I think the Affordable Care Act, the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, is jeopardizing the quality and the accessibility of that wonderful health care that we enjoy. So um, I think it's been uh, shown, uh, and again, these are estimates, but the projections are that over the next 10 years, the cost of Obamacare could rise to $2.6 trillion. Now, Sam, I don't know about you. I know you're pretty well healed, but uh, what's, how can you wrap around uh, $1 trillion? And I came across this illustration of what a trillion dollars is. And if you took $1 bills and stacked them one on top of another to get to a trillion, you'd have a stack 67,000 miles in uh, height. Uh, I think this is Obama's, um, President Obama's uh, space program, because that's already a quarter of the way to the moon. So another f uh, three trillion on top of that will be, we'll have a man on the moon again. So he's, you're saying Obamacare is off the rails, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. And um, I want to talk about one particular aspect of health care as we go forward. And that has to do with home health uh, care. And I believe the previous candidate for uh, the Republican candidate for the 17th Congressional District was uh, Lorraine Cummings. And she had her own uh, health care uh, agency. So maybe she was kind of prescient on this, see where we're going. But home health care is the most economical way of taking care of people. We want to, at all costs, keep them out of the hospital. And the price per day of such health care is only $145. It's still a lot of money, but $145. Well, how does that care uh, compare with the skilled nursing facility, a nursing home? That's uh, $373 a day. But one day in the hospital of regular care, med surge care, not intensive care, $1,805. So at all costs, we need to keep them out of the, keep a patient out of the hospital. Well, how can we do that? Well, one way is with excellent home health care. You have AIDS going in there, making sure these people aren't prone to uh, falling, fracturing a, a hip, which is is probably a highly lethal complication at that age. Maintaining uh, nutrition and uh, uh, physical therapy, things like that. So, keeping the people out of the uh, hospital. This is the way to do it. 
but uh, one of the uh, provisions of the Affordable Care Act that went into effect January 1 was to cut $22 billion out of Medicare, which would be headed in this direction, and use that to fund the Affordable Care Act. Well, what are the results here? I'm just looking at three states, our own Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, but these, um, it's uh, projected that about 40% of these home health agencies are going to be running at a loss. Now, what business can run at a loss? You and I can't do it. Nope. And we can't expect the home health agencies to do it. But uh, in Pennsylvania, about 30% will be operating a loss within four years, up to 60% in uh, New um, York. Okay, well, how's that going to affect the jobs that people like uh, Lorraine Cummings were providing? Well, it's predicted that in Pennsylvania we'll lose close to 13,000 of these jobs, over 80,000 in New York State, and another 12,000 in New Jersey. So again, this is, it's a ripple effect. Once that train goes off the tracks, it's devastating. So now we continue on with the, the fact that we know how, how disastrous this is, but this, I find this is an interesting picture, folks. This well, is a, go ahead. I started collecting uh, signatures for my uh, petition to get on the ballot for the Republican nomination. And this is my wife, Dr. Denise Moylan, who was the first signer <laughs> well, over, the, over at the that's, Kramer. That's great. And, and I have another picture here, I think, just so you, uh, you know. Well, the, I, I the, titled this The, the War, War on, on Women, yeah, question yeah, mark. Yeah, yeah. And Denise and I have been blessed with uh, three lovely daughters. And this was a painting that we had made on the occasion of Elizabeth, uh, the middle uh, daughter, uh, Elizabeth's graduation from the University of Chicago. And she's flanked by uh, my other two daughters on the left, uh, Lauren, and on the right, Tara. Now, uh, of course, you don't favor your children. You know, you love them all, all the same. Yes. But with that Tara on the right, she was born a little bit prematurely down at the University of Pennsylvania. And she, this was one of my exposures to the neonatal intensive care unit. And they had those little teacup babies where these parents were, you know, uh, had all their hopes on you know, turning things around and get that 50% survival. Tara was the biggest baby in there. She weighed about six pounds. Again, had some breathing problems. Uh, we baptized her there as this family from Schuylkill County did uh, for their uh, premature uh, child. But uh, so anyway, there's a special bond with that Tara. But anyway, enough said. But, you know, the thing is that when we're looking at, uh, as we're looking at politicians, who are running, uh, and, and I wish everyone the best. Uh, I'm not taking sides, uh, but the point is, uh, you're, you're, you're on this show here, you're, you're actually paying to let people know what you have to say and why. Um, we're all concerned about uh, our, our, our families. Our health care is important, particularly with seniors. And I think when seniors begin to be, uh, when they're facing these disasters, they can't see their own doctor, they can't have some of the insurance they have, or whatever then that becomes reality, Dave. That's when you start, well, wait a minute, I didn't vote for this. And, and so, you know, it's like, vote for this guy because he comes from a big family. And I, and I keep repeating that, and it's just it's not right. Vote for people that forget this fact that they're the Democrat or Republican. Vote for them because they have the qualifications so we're not in the mess that we're in today. Yes. Well, could I just say a few words about uh, job creation? Yes. In the 17th District. And, uh, part of my mission now is uh, fact-finding, and I'm uh, meeting with executives from some of the big employers, and I've just jotted down uh, who they are in several of the counties in the 17th district. Uh, people like Walmart Association, one of the biggest employers in Schuylkill County. Sapa Extrusions, they were the old Crisona Aluminum, and uh, Kovach in, in Carbon County. Uh, job creators, I'm going to meet with them and find out what's holding them back. Is it Obamacare? Uh, are there regulations from uh, DEP or uh, EPA? What do, we, what do we need to do to help them create a jobs? And there's one company that I'd like to hi highlight that's on the list for me to meet with is Lehigh Anthracite. And part of their operation is in uh, Tamaqua in Schuylkill County, 
and they were previously known as Lehigh Coal and Navigation. It was one of the giants in the coal mining anthracite business, but uh, Le Lehigh, um, the original company, went out of business, and some entrepreneurs uh, bought it, basically, to try to recapture some loan money, and now they're operating it at a profit, and they're giving priority to uh, people in the counties that uh, can provide the services, whether it's heavy equipment repair, uh, earth moving operations, et cetera. So I think they're a model of how in our own uh, region we can create jobs and use our natural resources. So what you're saying, Dave, you're already doing the work. You started the work already and you're in the process of meeting with these people. Um, got about 20 seconds left. Is there anything you'd like to tell the viewers? One is follow your heart. And um, if you'd like to get some more information about my campaign, visit me on uh, docmoylan.com. And I uh, welcome communications from anybody in the district. And I want to thank you for coming on the show. I uh, appreciate that very much. And folks, remember, you're, it's, it's your life. It's, it's affecting your particular life, your children, your families. Make sure that you know who the candidate is. Do not vote for the candidate because they're nice people, because they come from nice families, because they have a lot of money. No. If they're the candidate that have the qualifications, put them in. Congress has the lowest rating ever. I know Congressman Barletta has been fighting down there for the coal industry. He's been fighting as hard. He's been on this show a number of times explaining why Obamacare is killing us. Uh, these are from congressmen who are there. Dr. Moylan has all of his information on the website and he's more than happy to share whatever comments you have with you. See you next time.